in many ways the uh, other extremely common gram positive coccus streptococcus uh, behaves uh, very remarkably like staphylococcus there's a few differences and let's kind of just summarize them with the strep uh, family of bacteria there is a division into a b c d e for various types and species and so forth but probably a s uh, more important and independent type of division is what kind of hemolysis they would cause. So often you'll hear the strep classified as alpha hemolysis for alpha strep, beta hemolysis for beta strep, and there's even a non-hemolytic type. The beta hemolytic strep right here are the most uh, important ones and the most uh, dangerous ones because they cause a more complete pattern of uh, hemolysis. Like staph, the strep can inf infect just about anything, basically skin, wounds, upper, lower, respiratory infection. As you remember, the uh, strep group of bacteria are the uh, most common cause of the classical low bar type of pneumonia, which we'll get into when we talk about the pulmonary system. Uh, the strep also have a remarkable propensity for causing endocarditis, infecting heart valves. Uh, and like the staph, they can cause a fasciitis, soft tissue, skin, and so forth. But different from staph cocci, strep gram positive cocci, uh, have a few diseases which they may not cause directly, but they're linked to. So when people have scarlet fever, is that perhaps caused by a uh, strep directly? Well, possibly, but it's really more the effects of the uh, scarlet fever as a condition that follows a strep infection. Sa by the same token, a child or children or anybody that has rheumatic fever uh, has a history of a previous strep infection as well. And of course, the most classical acute uh, childhood type of glomerulonephritis, uh, formerly called post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis is now uh, generally just called acute glomerulonephritis. The point I'm trying to make is that the big difference, one of the big differences between strep and staph is that strep uh, is associated with sequelae of diseases which may not be caused by the bacterium directly but is known to follow the disease, uh, strep infection like scarlet fever, rheumatic fever, and glomerulonephritis. Another uh, disease that's almost uh, unique to strep is a disease here which we see a picture of called erysipelas. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, it's a disease of uh, immunocompromised hosts, often the very young and the very old, and it causes diffuse reddening uh, of skin, and this is a classical uh, case of it. Okay, uh, let's talk about some rods now, or the bacilli. And it's probably easy to run down and classify the gram-positive bacilli or the gram-positive rods to begin with because there's only a relatively few of them. Almost all of the other uh, rods or bacilli are gram-negative. So often the, uh, the term gram-negative rod is almost redundant. Uh, but there are a few diseases like diphtheria, listeria, anthrax, nocardia, clostridium, which are uh, caused by gram-positive rods. And I'm not, uh, it's not my desire to go into the details of all these diseases. We may do that when we get into the organ systems, or we may not. But I think it's worth saying a couple words about each one. Diphtheria is, uh, is a serious disease that is really no longer seen because of uh, immunization, at least in this country. It's a severe upper respiratory uh, tract illness. Uh, it characterized by a s sore throat, low fever, and there is a um, an inherent uh, fibrinous membrane which adheres to the pharynx and the tonsils or nasal cavity. It's called a pseudomembrane. So when you hear the term pseudomembrane referring to a thick fibrinous exudate associated with a severe upper respiratory infection, they're usually talking about diphtheria. Listeria uh, is a uh, type of uh, is several things. 
One of the things it is, it's a uh, foodborne infection that has a very, very high fatality rate, perhaps around 25%. Um, it's also a cause of meningitis uh, in newborns uh, by virtue of the fact that it has a remarkable propensity to infect the placenta. And uh, uh, many of the uh, newborn infections that are gotten through the placenta are from listeria. Anthrax, uh, we have heard so much about this in terms of uh, bioterrorism. Uh, classically, Bacillus anthracis uh, is an infection of uh, th which can be gotten from either oral inhalation or cutaneous routes. And um, it is a, a feared agent of uh, bio bioterrorism. Uh, nocardia or nocardiosis is a gram-positive rod. Some people think it's kind of related to fungi as well as in its properties. That um, uh, classically causes uh, respiratory infections, immunocompromised hosts. So if you hear somebody has no cardiosis, chances are they're immunosuppressed uh, through one method or another. It would not be fair if we didn't say a couple words about clostridium. Clostridium is the last gram-positive bacillus or gram-positive rod in this group. And it's a very important cause of food poisoning. It has several different species. Clostridium botulinum uh, releases a toxin which uh, causes a severe type of food poisoning. Uh, Clostridium perfringens is the most common cause of gas gangrene. Uh, it's uh, an aerobic bacteria that generates gas. And of course, Clostridium tetany is the causative agent of tetanus. So uh, I feel like we have probably adequately run down gram-positive rods. Let's talk about the gram-negative cocci now. And there's only really one genus, it's Neisseria. And Neisseria gonorrhea is the cause of gonorrhea. Neisseria meningitis is uh, one of the leading causes of a uh, epidemic type of meningitis, a feared type. And it is not the usual childhood type, which is Haemophilus. This is in you know older people, uh, children, uh, older children, young adults, old adults. So I don't know, my taxonomy may not be perfect, but to tell you the truth, uh, I really can't think of any uh, clinically important gram-negative caucus except for Neisseria. And of course, if you did a gram stain on these, your algorithm would be, once again, to look at the organisms. Are they round, cockle, or are they long, like hot dogs or bacilli? If they're red, they're gram negative because of the counter stain, and if they're blue, they're gram positive. So red balls are gram negative cocci. So let's get into our last group here called gram-negative rods. Most uh, bacilli are gram-negative, and uh, they cause a wide variety of infections. Uh, some of them live uh, normally in the colon. Uh, they cause a wide variety of pulmonary, uh, renal, uh, soft tissue infections. And whenever you hear a discussion about the gram-negative rods, E. coli is always at the top of the list, whether it's a, uh, um, a colon infection or a urinary tract infection, uh, perhaps a neonatal infection. So you always have to remember, when you run down the gram-negative gram rods, E. coli is at the top of the list. Technically, all these other bacteria stain gram-negative as well, and we'll finish running them down in the next 10-minute clip. And I thank you very much for now.